Good morning. Well, good morning, everybody. This is Michael Chitwood, and I'm coming to you live this morning from the ICCM studio and the ICCM world-renowned theater. It's good to have you with us this morning. I pray that your week has been successful. We've had a great week this week. We've been very, very busy. You can imagine putting out all these W-2s and 1099s for people around the country. So they're all anxious about getting that information. So we're glad that you're with us today. We have a great, great, uh, a great uh, audio um, and video program for you today that's going to be, I think, incredible. And we just want to welcome everybody that's joining us, by the way, by Facebook Live and all of our other platforms that we're on today. We're, we're glad to be with you today. I can tell you that for sure. Uh, we have a lot of information to share with you today, but I just wanted to let you know, uh, first of all, I would like for you to invite somebody to be with us. As you know, Periscope will be going away as of March the 31st, and um, they'll be moving to the Twitter showroom, and we're excited about that. Um, we're excited about that. We have a brand new format, by the way, that will be coming up on Twitter April 1st, the first Sunday in April, by the way. So we're glad that you're, we're glad that you're a part of us. You know, we've been doing this for, I think almost, uh, I think, I think somebody told me the other day it's going on seven years because we had uh, a different time uh, than we have now. Uh, we used to do this at nine o'clock and I mean, we were just flooded because people on the West coast would be able to be a part of this, uh, of this program. And, um, we moved it up and it's at five o'clock on the West coast. And then we decided to do a evening program for the West coast. So we had two church services on Sunday a day on, on Sunday. We had two services on Sunday, every Sunday, one at eight o'clock and one at seven o'clock and PM. And that was for the West coast. And so um, we, we discontinued that because it was just a lot of work and a lot, to uh, to do, but we're glad that you're with us today. Thank you very much for being a part of Potential Church and Living Life Without Limits. Very very great song, by the way, written by my son, Dr. Jason Martin from Washington State. Him and his wife Ramona, and uh, great 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 song. Uh, I want to give you an opportunity to invite somebody, especially those of you that are watching on that new platform. Uh, you have an opportunity now today to go ahead and hit that button there, and that will automatically invite people straight across. So we want you to we want you to be sure to do that. Also, I want you to be sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, there's a bunch of Chitwoods out there, and this is the one that you need. And I, I, when every time I say this, you go to the wrong one. Because I have a very, very, in about um, in just a few days, I have something very important that I'm going to be sharing with you on my YouTube channel that you won't be able to see on Periscope or Facebook. And it's those that will just subscribe to it. So if you want to do that, now here's here, here's here's how you just subscribe to my YouTube channel. You go to DRH Michael Chitwood. There's many H. Michael Chitwoods out there. People have set things up illegally and so forth, but this is the one that you need to go to. Dr. H. Michael Chitwood and subscribe to that. There's no charge for it, but you'll be the first to have all the information beginning just in a few days, maybe a week or so. Uh, you'll be the first to get the information directly and it will be straight to you before anybody else sees it through tweets or Facebook. So we're glad that you're with us today. Uh, does anybody remember the title of this today that I put up on the screen? I said that you are blessed and highly favored. Somebody type that up quickly. You are blessed and highly favored today. I'm going to give you a, a message today, and then I'm going to give you a testimony today. So uh, I need somebody to get that on the screen quickly. Uh, you are blessed and highly favored. There is my executive broadcast producer, uh, Debbie Booth, who's been with me from the beginning. She's a great, great asset to uh, me and to the ministry. Uh, you are blessed and highly favored. Now, the question is, do you believe that? I, I know the way that some of the emails are coming in. By the way, we get hundreds and hundreds of thousands of emails. I mean, we really do. Now, that, that, that's not one day. That's over a period of, there's Linda Creech, Pam Gaddis. Uh, these are all great, great, great people. It's been with us, Ethel, 
from Fort Lauderdale have been with us from, from the beginning. It's amazing how I can see these names. Uh, Bishop Jim Bush is with us. David Alcraz. Um, uh, we, we just, just, just a lot of great people. Thank you so much for being with us today. We appreciate, uh, there's Danny and, um, uh, Freeman Atkinson's Tommy, uh, Jeannie Blackburn. Thank you so much. Bradley, Michelle, Lindsay. I mean, just go on and on. I can't call everybody's name, but I, I wanted to, uh, talk to you today and have you invited people like i asked you to i didn't see me dear panther did she just joined and she did dear panther you need to invite somebody um um i want to talk to you um about oh oh, oh let me say that john let me let me do this first if you don't mind we came on just a few minutes early today for the purpose of letting you know that our millionaire boot camp now they're calling it something else uh, they're calling it the Elite Millionaire Expo. But uh, some people just can't take the boot camp. They're just weak. They'll always be weak. I mean, it's 15 hours a day. And the one that we had in 2016, I asked this morning on Facebook with 162,000 people, I asked this morning on Facebook, if you had to redo 2016, look where you would be today if you had just followed your coach's uh, advice. Um you got to be willing to change and procrastination and fear are, are exactly the same. They are, they are, I, I'll tell you something else. Um, I'll tell you something else, the double standards and hypocrisy. Somebody needs to put this up. Double standards and hypocrisy are twin brothers. Hypocrisy and double standards are twin brothers. They're identical in every way hypocrisy and double standards procrastination and fear they have the same dna and then you have some people just flat lazy they won't do anything i mean you can't get them to do any, anything and th that's just them so but i asked the question and man you know she's she, 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 you should have seen the response the question this morning was if you could redo those of you that was in the 2016 beginner boot camp 1500 people 1500 people here at the Millionaire Boot Camp in 2016, March of 2016. And um, uh, many of them people have changed their lives. Many of them opened businesses. Uh, I can give you a testimony now where the young lady has moved from 50-something thousand a year to over a half a million dollars a year just because she listened. A and she wasn't lazy. And she didn't have double standards. You know, these people run around all the time talking about how blessed you are, but you never, you never do any work. It's just, it's just deferred hope makes the heart sick. Deferred hope makes the heart sick. Let me get on to this. If you want to be a part of the millionaire boot camp, it's going to be intense. And for the week, stay home. Just stay home. We don't, we don't even want you here. There's no reason for you to come. You're just in my way. So for the week, people stay home. Those that want to change your life financially and really, really, I'm talking about really have a jump. Not, not just not just a $100 blessing or a $10,000 blessing. I'm talking about some real money. Real money. Uh, I want to talk to you today about being blessed and highly favored. What does it mean? And let you know that if you do what God tells you to do, you will be blessed and highly favored. Um, if you don't do what God tells you to do, you won't be blessed and highly favored. It's just that simple. Does everybody agree with that pretty much? If you do what God tells you to do, then you will be blessed and highly favored. If you don't do what God tells you to do, you will not be blessed and highly favored. One of the most important things that the Lord has ever spoken to me is taken from the passage in the scripture involving Elijah, who was a prophet. Somebody put that up on the screen quickly. I don't see anybody helping me this morning. Elijah was a prophet. And here's what it says, reading from the book of Kings, 1 Kings 17, 2 and 4, 2 through 4. And the word of the Lord came upon him saying, uh, now, now when the word of the Lord comes upon you, then if you want to be blessed and highly favored, John MacArthur and, and Julie and Charles, you've got to do what the word tells you to do. It says, get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, 
that is before Jordan. A cherith is uh, is is emptied into Jordan. So so it's it's kind of the same, but it's it before you get to Jordan, but it empties into Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. I want to talk to you this morning briefly uh, about the fact: Are you in the right place? And are you with the right man? I know some people that's been with pastors and spiritual leaders for years and never had any increase, but they did. The spiritual leader had plenty of increase. I know a man right now that, uh, I mean, he is, he is, he's taken in a lot of tithe from all of his spiritual sons. And they're calling me and asking me, well, what do you do here? What do you do there? Well, they, they need to be asking their spiritual father. Elijah's provision wasn't where he was. It was where God told him to go. Oh, I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. See, when God tells you to go somewhere, and when God tells you to come under a man, then, then you are to do what God tells you to to do if you want to be blessed and highly favored. This is profound. And I want you to receive the word of the Lord today. God is not speaking to the person that you're seeing in the mirror. He's speaking to the person that he wants you to be. If you think that who you're looking at in your mirror this morning, when you're combing your hair and brushing your teeth is what God wants you to be. He's not talking to that person in the mirror. He is talking to the person that he wants you to be so he can be so you can be blessed and highly favored. God has given each of you a purpose to fulfill on this earth. I believe it with all of my heart. I've seen it happen. Maybe you're supposed to start a new business. Maybe you're supposed to write a job. Maybe you're supposed to have a job change. Maybe you're supposed to invent something. Uh, many people have brought me inventions and things. And, and when they talk about they have to spend the money to get to trademarked or patent, it stops there. But their concept was good, but they stopped short of the goal line. They didn't get the football over the plane of the football. You want to do something, but you haven't taken the move to do what God has called you to do. Something is holding you back. Something is causing you trouble and discomfort in your life. And you have to understand today that the provision is out there where God told you to go, not where you are. You want to do this, but you're holding back because the provision isn't there yet. You're saying, God, I can't do what you're asking without first seeing the provision. That's a big mistake. Somebody right now out here just said that I can't do what I want to do until I see the provision. That's the opposite of the way that God operates. How do you do all these things and how do you get to this place that you need to be? This principle in First King applies directly to your situation today. God wants you to go where he told you to go, connect to where he told you to connect to, but you haven't done it yet because of either procrastination or, or, or because of fear or, or because of double standards or hypocrisy. There's something holding you back. See, God is sending the provision for your needs not to where you are. God is sending the provisions to where he wants you to be. That's the reason why that he told Elijah, you go to the brook Cherith, and, 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 to, and, and when you get there, you're going to find out that, that there'll be something great there for you. God is sending the provision for your needs, not to where you are, but where he told you to go to. And that's the problem that we have today, ladies and gentlemen, is that you just haven't moved to where God is told you to move because the provision is out there you haven't sown the seed that god told you to see so you, you've been you've been you've been you've been playing around with it and he told you to sow a bigger amount but no you cut it back and i've done that too by the way and and paid the price for it the question is are you at the place that God wants you to be? Are you with the man that God has connected you to be? Some of you aren't experiencing the provision because you're not there yet. You may be on your way there, but you're not there yet. Where he told you to go, doing what he told you to do, being what he told you to be. I want to say it again. I don't see anybody putting this up this morning. Listen, you need to understand today that you need to go where he told you to go, 
where God told you to go. Put that up quickly, quickly. Somebody, somebody, I need somebody helping me this morning. I don't know where, where's Debbie. She's not with, you need to go where he told you to go. One, two, you need to be doing what God told you to do. And three, you need to be what God told you to be. It's just that simple. Now, when you do those things, oh, I feel the power of the living God this morning. When you do those things, guess what? You will be blessed and highly favored. In verse 4, God said, I have commanded the ravens, meaning he has already spoken to those ravens, and they're on their way to where Elijah was supposed to go. Now, if Elijah doesn't go, the ravens are there waiting on him. The provision is there waiting on, on Elijah. But if Elijah decides to stay where he's at, He's staying hungry. He has no food. He needs to go where God told him to go. And in 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 5, so Elijah went and did according unto the word of the Lord. I want to encourage you today that I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you today. Always do what the word of the Lord says. For he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith. That is just before Jordan, the Jordan. Listen, in other words, if Elijah had stayed where he was, he could have prayed all day. If Elijah had stayed where he was, he could have fasted all day. If Elijah had stayed where he was, he could have cried all day, begged all day. He could have done everything that he wanted. And he could have even said this, and many of you have said this, well, God, you are supplying all of my needs according to your riches in heaven. Listen, but he wouldn't have seen God's provision if he didn't follow God's instructions. May I submit to you today respectfully, ladies and gentlemen, some of you have great potential. Some of you have a dream that's inside of you. God has given you something to do on this earth, not just to sit by. He didn't put you here to punish you. He didn't put you here to cause you pain and trouble and suffering. In fact, a lot of the pain and suffering that we have is because of things that we did. But God is saying to you favor is a result of obedience to the wisdom of God. Somebody record that this morning. Favor is the result of the obedience to the wisdom of God. When you follow God's word, you're going to find out that you're going to be able to be successful. You're going to be happy. You're going to be blessed and highly favored. Now, one of the reasons you aren't seeing greater provision from God financially and emotionally or in any circumstance, by the way, not just financially and emotionally, but one reason you're, that you're not seeing any greater provision from God financially and emotionally, by the way, is because you aren't doing what God has placed in your heart to do. You know that God told you to do something and you're not doing it. So you're not in obedience with what God has spoken into your heart, which is found in the word of God. God has placed something in your heart. What has God placed into your heart that you're supposed to be doing? May I submit to you today respectfully that there's great potential inside of each and every one of you. He is no respecter of persons. He didn't give somebody a, a whopping amount of potential here and leave you out. Every one of us are created equally in the image of God, and we've been given this potential that's inside of us. The difference between those that use it and those that just let it set dormant is the ones that increase in potential. Because he says, if I can trust you with a few small things, then I can trust you with great and mighty things. He even goes on to say this, to whom much is given, much is required. May I submit to you today that God has placed something in your heart to do, not just to sit idly by and do nothing, but God has given you a dream and a desire to do something. You're somewhere in your life other than where God wants you to be. Oh, glory to the living God. I don't know if you're excited about what I'm sharing with you or not, but I'm going to say it one more time. And I wish that somebody would help me, even though we're in South Dakota. You are somewhere in your life other than where God wants you to be. And that's the reason why that you're not being blessed like you should. That's the reason why that you're not being highly favored like you should. That's the reason why that you're not being financially blessed like you should. There's a reason why. That you're not being blessed and highly favored at the level that God wants you to because your level and your thinking is not his thinking. In fact, he said that your ways are not my ways. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. You don't think like God. He wants you to. That's the reason why he said in the book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. He said, I'm exceedingly, I am abundantly above all that you can ask or think. I believe that God has a plan for your life that if you choose to use that, you will be blessed and highly favored. He actually chose you from your mother's womb to fulfill that plan, but you must step out and obey the plan that God has for you. You have to be where God 
wants you to be. Where did he tell you to go? Are you doing what he told you to do? Are you being what you, he told you to be? God will not do for you what you can do for yourself. God will never do for you what you can do for yourself. He will never tell you to do something that you cannot do. God will never tell you to do something that you cannot do. I wish I could get somebody to record that this morning. Can somebody help me here this morning? He will never tell you to do something that you cannot do. If you do it, he will help you. Do what God tells you to do. If you do not obey God, if you do not step out in faith, and if you do not do what God has told you to do, then God will simply find somebody else to do what he told you to do. And then you will be wondering why you got passed over. You got passed over because you didn't do what God told you to do. The provision is at the brook. God makes things come to pass, but he makes things come to pass with your cooperation. This is intended to hurt or condemn anybody this morning. Don't take it that way. Uh, I know some of you are thinking, well, you're being a little hard this morning. No, I'm just passionate about your success. I'm passionate about your favor in life. I'm passionate to teach you that favor is more valuable than money. Uh, so you see, you need to have somebody that you can pick up the phone anytime, night or day, and ask them to do this or do that and say, hey, I need this, I need that. I haven't been obedient to what God has told me to do and what God has called me to do. If that's you today, then you need to change your thinking, repent, and you need to move into the success level that God has planned for you. And I think that that is something that's going to take you to a new dimension in life. We call it a new level, but it's really a new dimension. It isn't that God won't bless you because you haven't obeyed him. It's that his blessings are over there where he told you to go. It's over there where he told you to connect to. See, you're just connected to the wrong man. You're just connected to the wrong place. He told you to go there. He told you that your provision would be there. He told you that everything that you need would be there, but you're still here expecting God to bless you here and saying, God, why haven't you blessed me? Why is my financial provision not come to me yet? It's because you didn't sow the seed where you're supposed to sow the seed and go over there. You should have gone over there. I wish I could get somebody to help me this morning. There's a reason why that you won't do this. God is meeting all of your needs. He's sending his supply to where he told you to go. My question to you this morning, respectfully, please receive this today. In the in, in the in, in the in my motive of getting this to you today is to let you know that God is for you. He is not against you. But God will even if you don't do what God tells you to do, he's still not going to be for be against you. But I can tell you this. God wants you to do what he's called you to do. And until you learn to practice that, then you're never going to be able to get what you need to get. Listen. It's important that you understand today that you have to stop holding back. Go for what God has given to you. You want a new house? Then start looking for it. Start dreaming for it. Start writing it down. Just don't get in your car and drive up and down the street. No, you make a list of what you want in the house. Get a vision of what you want in the house. Get a vision of what the outside of the house should look like. Don't just buy the first thing that comes along because you want something a little bit better. God Almighty, God didn't tell you to get something a little bit better. He wants you to have a mansion. And God has given you the ability to have a mansion. But he said this, you can't do something if you don't go where I tell you to go. Are you where God wants you? Are you sure? Are, are you sure? Do you talk to your mentor? Do you talk to your coach? See, it's your job to pursue me. It's not my job to pursue you. You're the protege. Until you get as much as I've got, you're going to be the protege. Don't ever think you could jump ahead of your coach or your mentor. That's why people beat the door down to see me every day. They want to be with their coach. They want to be with their mentor. 
if you just don't see how God is going to provide this, that I'm telling you that you will never have what God has for you. This is supernatural provision. If you do what you're supposed to do, you need to go there. You need to sow your seed and go there. This is one of the greatest lessons of life from Elijah. And as look at this at verse 17, verse six, chapter 17, verse six, and the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and in the evening. And he drank of the brook. I believe that God has commanded the ravens. Your provision is over there. If Elijah hadn't obeyed, God still would have been faithful to send the provision where he had told Elijah to go. Now follow that carefully. God told Elijah to go somewhere. If Elijah didn't go, the ravens still would have been there, which means the provision still would have been there. The provisions would still have been there where God told Elijah to go. So Elijah can't say, oh, God, you didn't take care of me. You didn't do what you told me you would do. No, he told you to go there and the provisions would be over there. The, the ravens would have brought the bread and the meat every morning and every evening, but it would have gone to waste. Elijah could have starved to death, even though God has been faithful to provide his needs over there. To get where God wants you to be, let me say that again. To get where God wants you to be, to have the provisions God has proposed for you. God has proposed provisions for you. God has proposed vision, provisions for you. You must begin to walk by faith, not by sight. And that's the biggest challenge that most believers have is they're trying. The lady told me, she said, well, I got to wait till God gives me the provisions before I move. No, no. You have to realize that Elijah had to go to the brook Cherith to receive the provision. I'm going to say this again. I feel with all of my heart, I've said this before, every person that has moved to Chattanooga, Tennessee, to be connected to this coach and to this ministry have been very successful. None of them, none of them have gone down in their money. They've all gone up. Every one of them, ask them, they've all gone up in their money. Teresa, some of you need to be living in Chattanooga. All you have to do is get started. You know how you get started? Take a step of faith. Take a step of faith. That's all you have to do. You may not need to go somewhere, but you still need to st take a step of faith. It's not necessarily a location. It's not necessarily that location. It could be an attitude change. And I know some people that need to have an attitude change. I know some people that's nothing but a narcissist. Can somebody put that word on the screen? I know somebody that's just a narcissist. You can't tell them anything. And when you get to the place that you can't be taught something, you're involved in witchcraft. When you think you know everything and nobody can teach you a thing and nobody can show you where you is wrong and you never admit that you're wrong. My God, what kind of person wants to be around that kind of person? Not me. Not necessarily the location. It could be an attitude change. It, it could be it could be a decision that you need to make, and by, by some action you need to take. But when you take a step of faith and start following what God has told you to do, then watch this. There's a supernatural flow of provision that begins. And here's what the Lord told me to tell you. Coming in this morning at five o'clock, here's what God told me to tell you. We get up early here. We don't sleep all day. We're, we're up early. Four o'clock here at five o'clock. I mean, we're here ready to go for you. Here's what God said. When you do what I tell you to do, he said that your cup will be full and overflowing. Now, that's the word for someone today. I think it's for all of you, but not everybody's going to receive it. That never that never happens that way. Your cup is going to be full and overflowing. Only when you obey what God has told you to do.
He also said to this, he said, I will bring more peace to your life than you've ever had before. I'm speaking to Floyd over there right now. Floyd, he said, I'll bring more peace to your life than you've ever had before. Same thing for you, Sue. He said, I'm going to bring more blessings to your life than you've ever had before. He said, I'm going to bring more anointing to your life than you've ever had before. He said, I'm going to bring more influence, more power, and more authority to your life than you've ever had before. And that will all follow obeying the word of the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Can I get somebody to type up glory to God this morning? Vicki, glory to God. Alan Meshagan Sr., Bishop Alan Meshagan Sr., my best friend, glory to God. He said that your cup will be full and overflowing when you follow the instructions of the word of the Lord. And then you'll be blessed and highly favored. And then you can run around and have that sign on your, on your, on your lapel that says, I'm blessed. Because really, you're not blessed if you're not doing what God has. Elijah went to Cherith because God told him to go. The provision was over there. Get over there. Favor awaits those who go where God has called them. Put that on the screen quickly. Favor awaits those who go where God has called them to go. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, Go thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook Cherith. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook and I have commanded the ravens to feed you over there. Elijah's provision was not where he was at. It was where God told him to go. It was what God told him to do. If you look at the life of Elijah, you'll find that nobody is like Elijah. Notice that it was not until Elijah stepped out to do what God told him to do that God allowed him to have everything and to sustain him. He was blessed. Miracles began to happen. He called fire down from heaven three times, by the way. He called fire down from heaven three different times. Oh, glory to God. I, I need to, I, I, I'm going to call fire. He multiplied food miraculously. He was the first person to raise somebody from the dead. Did you know this? This is Elijah. Why? Because he was over there where he was supposed to be. And then after all of that, revival broke out. It's imperative for you to find your place there, your place there. Do you know your place there, Marilyn? Elisa, do you know your place there? I declare to you today that multiplied blessings is coming to your life and multiplied grace. The Lord just spoke that into my spirit. And I want you to record that and I want you to memorialize that today because that's going to be something that you're going to need to know and remember for the months to come. Multiplied blessings and multiplied grace. God said, I am giving to you today multiplied blessings and multiplied grace. God is ready to take you into a future that's going to be bright and successful. He's just wanting you to trust him and to believe his word. That's all he wants. Just trust him and believe his word. I believe with all of my heart that you can be fully blessed. He told him to do this. Go over there. Question. Are you where God wants you? Two. Are you doing what God told you to do? And number three. Are you obeying the word of the Lord? If you are, then you're going to be in a position to be blessed and highly favored like never before. God was still provided his provisions for Elijah over there. But if Elijah didn't go, he would have starved to death. He could have been sitting over there praying and bawling and squalling and fasting and crying out to God over at the other place. Why didn't you take care of me? That's what some of you are saying now. Why, God, why have you, why have you, why have I lost my job? Why have I failed this? God didn't fail you because God is always for you. In the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 31, he says, if I be for you, then who can be against you? Always remember that God is for you. God is always for you. I have three questions for you. 
Are you where God told you to be? Number two, are you doing what God told you to do? And number three, are you being what God told you to be? If you are, then you're following what God has said. Glory to God. I pray that the blessings of the Lord will come upon you like never before, and that you'll have continued multiplied blessings and multiplied grace the rest of this year. I want to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, you gave this message to me, and you told me to talk about being blessed and highly favored if they would follow the instructions of the Lord. And Father, today, if there's anybody on this program today, on this broadcast today, the Facebook or Wirecast or any of the other multiple platforms that we're on, I'm asking you right now to let them know that they need to repent of not doing what you told them to do. It doesn't mean they've backslid. It doesn't mean they're a sinner. It doesn't mean any of that, but you need to repent of not doing what God has told you to do. Repent for not coming under the man of God that you need to come under. Repent for not being over there at the right time. Because when you're not over there at the right time, then you'll miss, miss the blessings of the Lord. And Father, we thank you today that you will never leave us and you'll never forsake us. And you said that you'll always be with us. And Father, we ask you today to bless each precious person that's on this broadcast today. Thank you, dear God, that they're able to see how that they can change their life for the better. God bless them. I bless every person that's on this broadcast today. Every person that's on this broadcast today. I bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said that he would make you rich and add no sorrow to it. That's the God that we serve. The God that we serve. He said, I will make you rich and add no sorrow to it. He wants you to be rich, wealthy, happy, successful, and healthy. You can do it. You can do it. You have the potential to change your circumstances. If you would do what God has told you to do, go where God told you to go and be all that God has told you to be. And Father, we pray for the blessing of the Lord upon each and every person today. Bless them today, God. Bless every person today. Oh, I just feel a special anointing. I, I, feel, I feel a strong anointing that many of you out there are receiving this word today and knowing that you can do better. It's not a message to put you down or to condemn you, but it's a message to lift you up. Everywhere Jesus went, he picked people up, didn't push them down. I want you to know that you can do better. And why do we need to do better? So we can do the things in the Bible. I told him on Facebook this morning, I said, I have three widows that live on my property. Gladys now is 97 years of age, still driving and going to church. Husband worked for me. He died. I said, live there till you die. We're supposed to be taking care of the widows. You can't do that if you're a broke man. We're supposed to be feeding the hungry. Every Sunday, we feed everybody right here at this church. Everybody that comes in that door gets fed. Every person that comes in gets fed free of charge. We are feeding the hungry. We're clothing the naked. You can't do that if you're broke. And that's one reason why God wants you to have money so you can do what he's told you to do and Get this gospel out. That's why you need money. Money is for preaching of the gospel. Money is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Feed the poor. Take care of the widows. You, 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 you look in the Bible about what God says to do about the widows. You follow that thing through. And you'll see that there's major blessing and favor and honor when you take care of the widows. That's why God has blessed the Chitwood family so much. I have three widows living on my property right now. In houses, not in my house, but in houses around my 22 acres. God, I pray right now that you'll let this message go deep into their hearts. Deep into their hearts. Thank you, Lord. It's time for us to receive our tithes and offerings, as we always do every Sunday. We believe that you should be a tither. I've been a tither since I was 10 years of age. I thank God for the teaching and the training that my father and mother gave me. Two of the greatest people on the face of the earth, Herman Cecil Chitwood and Irene Brown Chitwood. I don't know what I would have done 
without a great mama and daddy. Everybody needs a great mama and a daddy. I want you to pay your tithe. Your tithe belongs right here. If you believe in tithing, your tithing belongs here. Tithing is 10% of your gross. It's 10% of all your increase, and it's actually your first fruits. I want you to sow a seed today. That means give an offering. The Bible says if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. And somebody put it up, Debbie, my, my executive broadcast producer, IPAL International Preachers Academy Worldwide. And by the way, we have a whole section over here, a whole closets and closets that we give brand new, not brand new. We give to them it's brand new. We give new suits, shirts, ties, top coats to all of our young IPAL ministers of the gospel. We have a few ladies clothes, not many. But we have a few ladies that, that are in this. It runs from 13 to 24. I just met with a doctor yesterday and he was so blessed by what we're doing through IPAL. And now with our brand new college that we're going to be having our great meeting on Tuesday, by the way. And you need to be in prayer about that because our last phase of this phase five is going to be our college. And this Bible college is going to be able to issue certifications and, and associates degrees and bachelors of science and bachelors of arts and, and masters of of uh, degrees and, and doctorates of divinity and doctors of theology and people need their degrees. They need degrees. And you be in prayer about that, that meeting, people are flying in from everywhere to be in this meeting at 11 o'clock on, on Tuesday. It's probably the biggest meeting that I've ever held in my life. 20, 30 people are flying in just for this private meeting at my office so that we can have the transferring of this great Bible college of 20 years over into ICCM. And you need to be a part of that. You need to be a part of that. So today I want you to help us with our IPAL students because now they can transition right into the Bible college after you're going through IPAL. Never knew why it would work that way, but God has all wisdom. When he told me to do IPAL, I said, well, I thought we need to school first. He said, I told you to do IPAL. See, there, there it goes back. Don't try to outthink God. Don't, don't try to cut your giving down and negotiate with God. The first voice you hear on giving is, is the voice of God. The second voice is the enemy, is the devil. And I've been there, by the way. I told you about the story about the call for a $10,000 offering up, up in Sayersville, New Jersey. And I started negotiating with God. And I think I finally got it down to 7000 I told my wife, I said, write a check. She pulled it out. She had it written for 10000 I shut up right then. I knew I was done. I knew that I heard God at the $10,000 level, but I was trying to negotiate God down. Let me tell you something. Don't try to outthink God and don't try to out negotiate God. You're making a big mistake. And I've learned that lesson. I did the same thing that many of you've done. You try to negotiate with God the amount down. How many of you have ever go negotiated the amount up? Well, that night I said, Deborah, honey, please. Write that check right now for $7,000. She pulled out. She said, well, it's already written for $10,000 because God has spoken to her. Don't you tell me that God doesn't speak to people these days. God still speaks to his children. You have a voice to hear that God will speak to you today. I want you to help us with our iPod. We need some, we need some, some support there because we have students that will be coming in this year. and We need some help. Save America's churches. Don't forget about that. That's kind of been a little bit dormant but we're raising it back up because there's churches calling us, asking us to help save them from it falling into the hands of other people that's non-believers and falling into uh, organizations where they're going to tear the church down. Ladies and gentlemen, help us with Save America's Churches. Save America's Churches. And, any, and, I, and I didn't know that back when we started. In fact, Bishop Alan Meshagan was one of the first ones. And Denise Tobert and many, many more. And Debbie Booth and many, many more. They helped us with that. We didn't know why we needed it back then. But you can see now today that we live why we need it. Because they're trying to shut the churches down. You can sow your seed at iccmworldwide.org or you can mail a check iccmworldwide.org somebody type that up this morning for me iccmworldwide.org iccmworldwide.org you can sow private it's secure you can give there and I'm asking you to pay your tithes sow a seed help us with IPAW and help us with Save America's Churches that's what I'm asking today and the Bible says ask and we shall receive you 
let God speak to you about the amount. I can tell you this, that this is good ministry, it's good ground, and you shall receive a harvest. I promise you that. If you sow a seed today, you shall receive a harvest. Father, I pray that every seed and every tithe, I pray that the people that help us with I, Paul, and save America's church, I pray that they'll be blessed and highly favored. They'll be blessed going out and blessed coming in. They're the head and not the tail. And I believe today, God, that those that respond to this message today of being in the right place and sowing the right amount, don't negotiate with God. Be in the right place and sow the right amount. I believe today with all of my heart that the blessings of the Lord will come upon them greater and they'll have multiplied blessing and multiplied grace in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us today. I love each and every one of you so very much. Watch for our YouTube. Please go subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's going to be some good things coming up, professional things coming up. We're getting a bunch of that junk that's off of there, off of there, and we're getting ready to get some stuff on there that's going to be a blessing to you. Um, so God bless you. I pray that you have a powerful week. I want to give you this blessing. Are you ready to receive this blessing? If you can, record it. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Just repeat this after me. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you today. May the Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace every day. Just remember, the worst is over and the best is yet to come. Can I get you to put that on the screen for me? The worst is over. And the best is yet to come. I'd like for you to record that if you would, so it can be memorialized there on that screen, knowing on this day that you and I made a joint declaration coming into agreement by faith. The worst is over and the best is yet to come. I want to see it up there at least a hundred times real quick. Catherine, I, I, I see yours, Francis, Ron, I see it, Jeff. The worst is over and the best is is yet to come. The worst is over. And the best. Violetta. Sure love you all the way from Phoenix, Arizona. Up early. She's one of my favorite, favorite ladies. She's a great, great girl. Our state chapter president, by the way, for Arizona is Violetta. Boy, I'm so glad that she is there. She's a praying lady. And man, I love Violetta so, so very much. Dear Panther's a great lady. Y'all just great. I'll tell you, David Alcrez and, and, uh, uh, I, I tell you, just you're just so good. There's Jenny Spencer. There, of course, uh, Denise Tobert. There, the worst she's got to know. Uh, uh, Pastor Denise Tobert, uh, uh, love her so very, very much. Larry Ward, Timothy Winters, Jennifer Thomas, uh, Tina, Tina, Tina Sage. I think it is Tina. If I said that wrong, please forgive me. Adrian L. Warner. Lisa Patterson, I received that the worst is over. Lisa, I believe right now by you declaring that, that the worst is over and the best is yet to come. Emmanuel Goomings, Greg James, God bless you, Greg. Marty Evans, Bob Mooney, God bless you. Latanya Watson, oh, she's great, man. I love Latanya. She is great. I tell you, we have so many great people. I just hate to let you go, but I've got to go. I love each and every one of you. And remember, the worst is over. And the best is yet to come. I believe that, don't you? The worst is over. And the best is yet to come. God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. We love you so much. I appreciate each and every one of you. You're the greatest group of people I have ever met in my life. Be sure if you want to come and be with us. Uh, we have a few scholarships available, but not many for our April conference, April the 8th through the 10th, right here at the Millionaire Boot Camp slash Elite Millionaire Expo, Elite Millionaire Expo. I tell you, I just can't get away from that Millionaire Boot Camp. How many like that name, Millionaire Boot Camp? If you like that name, type yes on the screen, the Millionaire Boot Camp. That was our first one that we had here, by the way. We've carried these all through the United States for 40 years. But this is the worst is over. The best is yet to come. I agree with you 100% on that. Uh, the Elite Millionaire Expo or the Millionaire Boot Camp. Look, Millionaire Boot Camp. Look at all this. See, all of, all of my creative team, they wanted the Elite Millionaire Expo. But look, the Millionaire Boot Camp is just off the charts. Millionaire Boot Camp. You need a boot camp. We need a Millionaire Boot Camp so that we can really drill this stuff into you. God bless you, Penny. All right. Well, look, I love you. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you soon. Remember, the worst is over 
and the best is yet to come. And when you want something that you've never had, when you want something that you've never had, you have to do something that you've never done. I look forward to seeing all of you later. I love you. I'll see you later.